Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. Welcome to the show. It is time for the weekly crypto market sentiment report here on the Crypto Conversation. Are you ready? Let's get on with the show. All right, team. So don't forget, you can listen to this podcast as a regular podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you do, in fact, get your podcasts. But uh, as I like to do, I'm going to use some visual references. So if you want to follow along with what I'm looking at as I share my screen, the best place to do that is on the Rave New Coin YouTube channel. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Here we are at Brave New Coin. A dot com. Where's Bitcoin? Bitcoin is at $50,730 on the BLX, the Bitcoin liquid index at the moment. Ethereum on the ELX, uh, 4,344. So another way, if we look at that just on coin market cap, you see there's a little bit of a jump. A little bit of a bump uh, today, this morning, or this afternoon, tonight, or <laughs> whatever time it is in your location. It was this morning for me, we saw a bit of a, a relief bounce, you know, uh, across the market. Um, so on the on the chart, looks a little bit, bit like this Bitcoin. Sort of yeah, got right down to, yeah, about just over $55,000. Uh, earlier today and then jumped back up uh, almost to 58 and now we're sort of back down at 57 you know still kind of no man's land really after you know sort of hitting you know back 67 uh, late October and and then up to pretty much uh, 69 um, earlier this month and then yeah, it's been sort of a, a downhill ever since. So yeah, I don't know. Can we can we recover? Does the does the bull market resume uh, into the close of November, and then in December do we get Q4 fireworks? Don't know. Don't know. Um, I think the bull trend is is still intact, but um, yeah, I think fair to say that Bitcoin is maybe not uh, fulfilling everyone's bullish expectations just at the moment. And so I think that is probably reflected in uh, the fear and greed index, which as you can see today, it is showing fear, 33, uh, 33 out of 100, 100 being green, super, super greedy. Uh, 33 is, yeah, definitely showing some fear in the market at the moment. One of the reasons for that, of course, is Mount Gox. Who would have thought that Mount Gox would still be so relevant here um, in the latter stages of 2021? But yeah, it is. And, and the reason for that is because, you know, the, the Mount Gox trustee is sitting on, um, yeah, a, a stash of Bitcoin, right? 141,000 or there or thereabout. And it looks like they are finally going to redistribute uh, some or all of those Bitcoins, which just means it's kind of like a, that could be a, a big glut of supply. And you'd think that some of the people uh, that have, uh, you know, not so much been holding, but kind of a forced hold on those coins, they might want to liquidate some of them and cash that in, which, um, yeah, would be some, some sell pressure. Uh, which is what this thread uh, by uh, VJ says. But of course, you know, the other point that he says, while it is uh, short term sell pressure on Bitcoin, bullish in the long run, because, you know, it just means that that supply gets uh, redistributed out into the world's population as the process of Bitcoin uh, monetization uh, continues. But yeah, it's not to say that in the short term market, is a little bit jittery uh, about that. What does this say? Here's a, a Reuters article uh, from a few days ago. Bitcoin heading for worst week in months as those Mt. Gox payouts loom. Yeah, I don't think there's anything new in this article. Essentially just saying, yeah, people, uh, investors have been taking profit and waiting to see what happens uh, next with all of those 141,000 Bitcoin on the sideline maybe could be distributed. Uh, this is the 
the confirmation notice of that rehabilitation plan. I think that's that's what they mean by uh, distribution. Obviously, I believe this is um, originally in Japanese, so English translation. translation. It, it doesn't really say much. It just says that, yeah, if you're one of those creditors, uh, you should make sure that you're in the system. I'm sure you're already in the system um, if you are one of those creditors. All right, let's move on. What else is happening? Yeah, did you see this? So El Salvador, they are going to issue effectively a Bitcoin bond, uh, right? Um, they're going to issue bonds to the value of one billion uh, in USD on tokenized bonds uh, on uh, the Liquid Network, which is a Bitcoin sidechain. Um, put together by uh, Blockstream, who have, yeah, they've put this together, really. So um, here is uh, the official announcement blog post from old mate Samson Mao at Blogstream. So Samson uh, writes that uh, earlier this year, before the Bitcoin law was announced in El, in El Salvador, um, Strike CEO and prominent Bitcoiner Jack Mallers uh, reached out to the Blockstream team uh, to let them know that he had been on the ground in El Salvador uh, working diligently on uh, various uh, Bitcoin initiatives uh, in El Salvador. And so uh, from there, so the Blockstream team uh, got involved as well. And so behind the scenes, they've, uh, I think this, the, the bond offering was their idea, but obviously uh, the president of El Salvador He's on board. Uh, so they've announced that they will issue a 1 billion US Bitcoin bond on the Liquid uh, Network. And the 1 billion US raised will be split between a 500 million allocation of Bitcoin and a 5 million allocation to infrastructure uh, to build out the energy and Bitcoin mining infrastructure in El Salvador. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty pretty exciting um you know as always with anything bitcoin or el salvador has been slightly controversial but um you can see some of the details here so lynn alden says you know um has a similar risk reward characteristics uh to convertible uh bonds so you know lower yield than other el salvador existing bond products but you know uh, there's a potential um upside uh, kicker, if you like, uh, based on Bitcoin performing well. So, you know, if you're a Bitcoin bull, then you'll be bullish on, on this bond. Some of the some of the details here. Yeah, so a billion dollars. Um, I think that's the yield pays out 6.5%. And as I say, 500 million goes into the infrastructure build and 500 million goes directly into... Uh, purchasing Bitcoin, and that's all happening on the Liquid Network. So, yeah, I mean, just fascinating to see how fast El Salvador are moving. Cool. Uh, what else is happening? Yeah, I mean, meanwhile, you know, the inflation continues, right, <laughs> all around the world, here in New Zealand, certainly in the U.S., this was, this was just a weird blog post from uh, the St. Louis uh, Fed. Um, they said they wrote a blog saying a Thanksgiving dinner uh, served of poultry or turkey costs a uh, dollar forty-two. I think that's per serving, whereas a soybean <laughs> product-based dinner serving, providing the same amount of calories, uh, would cost sixty-six cents. So that's half the half half the cost, and it would provide twice as much protein. But it's just, I don't know, is that weird? Is it weird that a central bank is saying don't eat the traditional Thanksgiving um, meal of, of, of turkey, instead eat uh, some soy-based product? I don't know, seems weird. People have pointed out that that's quite dystopian. I'm sure uh, that the Fed... Uh, the Fred, the fried, uh, the Fred blog. I'm sure they meant well, but it's just strange to be, yeah, uh, I don't know. Do middle Americans, do they really want to eat soy for Thanksgiving? Not sure.
but really as a result um, of inflation, of course, it simply means uh, not so much winter is coming, but printer is coming. Not even coming, I think the, the printer uh, continues. And if the printer does continue for the short term, at least, well, so does inflation. Uh, let's move on. What else is happening? Yeah, one of the most controversial um, statements made on crypto Twitter this week or even uh, this month, perhaps this year, came from uh, Su Zhu, uh, CEO, CIO as well at uh, Three Arrow Capital. Um, he basically came out last week, no, not even last week, a few days ago, uh, and said that, yes. I have abandoned Ethereum despite supporting it in the past because Ethereum has abandoned its users despite supporting them in the past. And the idea of sitting around jerking off, watching uh, the Ethereum uh, token burn and concocting purity tests while newcomers cannot afford to use the chain due to uh, gas fees is gross, says Zoo. So this was, this was a very provocative um, statement, but he's not really wrong. You know, Ethereum gas is just, as you'll know, uh, listeners, just been out of control uh, for a while now. And just, you know, doing, trying to do a swap in MetaMask or mint an NFT cost you anywhere from 50 bucks to a couple of hundred bucks in gas, which is it's not sustainable. It makes Ethereum effectively unusable, especially for, for newcomers. So Sue was kind of pointing, pointing out that, you know, all the, all the, the rich Ethereum holders, the, the big guys with lots of Ethereum, they're fine with it. They can afford the gas, but you know, for the newcomers, this is why we've seen the, the likes of uh, Solana uh, Avalanche and all these kind of new generation smart contract platforms um, start to, well, not just increase in token value, but also, um, you know, start to grow in user adoption, potentially at the expense of Ethereum. So, look, Zoo, of course, got a lot of pushback. Um, someone else said, you know, talking about Zoo's tweet, this is said much harsher than I would put it, but I directionally agree uh, with Zoo what is with what Zoo is saying here, and that is because Ethereum has not executed over the past few years. I can't think of a single 10x useful improvement uh, that Ethereum has made in the last four years. And Zoo said, "Look, thanks. This is what I'm trying to say. It's been many years now." And he said that some VCs have tried to shame him for saying this, but he's had a lot of founders reached out, reach out privately and agree that uh, the infrastructure layer are, are, that is Ethereum is simply holding back uh, the apps and the dApps and it's not going in the right direction. So hot take or not, yeah, provocative stuff makes you think uh, where to for Ethereum. Mm, I mean, yeah, come on. ETH 2.0 can't come soon enough at the moment. Uh, okay, still on Zoo, he did come back and eventually he said, look, I, I want to soften this. And he finally said that, you know, abandon is the wrong word. He said it in the heat of the moment. Uh, he says there are great teams working on scaling Ethereum on layer two. Uh, he just would have preferred to see um, a different, different roadmap uh, to scaling, which is fair enough. All right. Let's leave that there. Let's move on to, uh, you know, Chris Dixon um, from uh, Andreessen, from Andreessen A16Z, the, the crypto uh, version of Andreessen. He posted this uh, Substack piece. Um, it's quite good. It's by Model Citizen. So just look up Model Citizen uh, on Substack if, if you want to read it. Um, but this guy, you know, he's a smart writer. Um, basically, his thesis was, you know, Web3, um, crypto, blockchain, but yeah, really Web3, NFTs, DeFi, is there something there? Is it smoke and mirrors? You know, because the, the, the framing from his point of view was that he knows lots of smart 
people, lots of smart friends, and they're kind of evenly split down the middle. Some of those smart people are all in on Web3, and some of those smart people are like, no, it's a scam, it's a Ponzi, smoke and mirrors. So who do you trust? And, you know, there's, there's no real way forward except to immerse yourself in the wonderful world of uh, Web3 and, and try it out for yourself, which is what he's done. And he's come away with, um, I suppose, the, the realization that he regrets to inform the reader that it is totally legit and crypto blockchain networks actually might be technologically, economically, and politically transformative. <laughs> so, yeah. But you can only really come to that realization if you have a play yourself. And he used uh, this thread by uh, Avinkatesh Rao, who it's quite a good thread, actually. Um, basically, just documents his own learning and journey into Web3. It's a long, long thread, but documents his whole process. Now, of course, I've lost my, here it is. Um, but he ran a poll, you know, to his own followers saying, what's your reaction to the Web3 discourse? And so, you know, almost a quarter, 23% are openly hostile. 18% are just ignoring it, don't care. They're ignoring it, they're uninterested. 39% are watching and 20% are in it and participating. So I think the key factor there is 25% almost are openly hostile. And you just see this from Twitter everywhere. As soon as you mention NFTs or, or Web3, people are like, no, you're burning the planet. It's a scam, Ponzi scheme, but they haven't taken the time to learn. So, you know, what are we saying here? It's basically just either an amazing number of smart people are getting snookered or an amazing number of smart people are uninformed and unimaginative and they haven't taken the time to do the work and get involved. So it just goes to show, I think what I'm trying to say is that it's still very early in Web3, probably a lot of upside uh, because to really get uh, involved and participate and get uh, access to some of that upside you have to do the work you have to get involved um yeah there's another way of saying jack butcher couldn't really have said it better uh with a simple meme uh, a meme equals a thousand words so you know web web two is like you know uh, walled garden platforms where in exchange for investing your time and energy and creativity if you do really well you might get a bunch of followers and you might get uh, 3,000 hearts or likes or whatever on your work yay whereas in web 3 uh, for uh, in return for investing your time and energy and creativity, you could get three ETH, uh, which is worth, you know, what is it worth? Uh, about 14 grand at the moment. So which one would you rather do? Yeah, I like that. All right. And just, yeah, finishing off Adidas Originals, starting to starting to play uh, in Web3. Adiverse, anyone? Um, yeah, what, the, what they're talking about building with the sandbox, uh, which has been doing very well uh, as late because it's a metaverse token. All right, let's start to finish off. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, we're going to finish off with Elon Musk because we haven't spoken about Elon for a while. But um, today, did you see this today? He tweeted at CZ from Binance and said, hey, CZ, what's going on with your Doge customers? Sounds shady. And this is because, uh, <clears throat> yeah, slightly drawn out, but essentially because of the way that um, Binance had structured their Doge wallet, a whole lot of Doge transactions have effectively got stuck and they've been trying to, um, you know, uh, rectify this and fix those transactions and make sure everyone's balances uh, uh, of Doge are what they should. And they haven't been able to yet. So Elon's kind of given them a poke. And um, yeah, so as a result, uh, CZ has uh, 
uh, yeah, they, they, they published a, a, a thread which kind of explains uh, more on what is happening. And uh, so Elon was just saying, you know, he was um, giving Binance and CZ a poke on behalf of the Doge holders. So, yeah, just uh, interesting to see. I think that situation has mostly been mitigated now due to a, a Doge update uh, that was able to get all those transactions through. All right, just finish off. Published a, a publish, I published a podcast yesterday uh, with Grace, who is the artist behind Crash Punks, which is a new NFT collection coming up on Stacks. And um, yeah, I think it's cool because the artwork is cool. And also because the artwork is, is loosely inspired by Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Of course, you'll be aware that Snow Crash is a very famous sci-fi slash cyberpunk novel published 1992 and uh, famously introduced the, the world to the term metaverse um, but how cool is that artwork and um, I think you know if you can see the kind of the subtle nods here the you know the main character in, in Snow Crash is called Hero Protagonist and um, which is a cool name for a main character. And Hero, of course, famously is a pizza delivery um, instigator or facilitator, driver, whatever you want to call it. So this is obviously a, a nod to Hero protagonist with the pizza in the back. And um, just as I was doing this podcast, I came across this article from, uh, from 2019. I think I missed it at the time. It's on reason. Uh, it's it's very much tongue in cheek, but it's worth a read because it kind of makes the argument that Neil Stevenson could very well be Satoshi Nakamoto, or maybe part of the Satoshi Nakamoto uh, team. And as much as that sounds far fetched, you know the the history and the timeline it, it very much lines up because you know if you've read any of Neil's books. Um, certainly Snow Crash, but it, it, almost even more so Cryptonomicon, which was published um, a few years after Snow Crash, I want to say um, yeah, mid to late 90s. Um, and I read it around, around then, perhaps showing my age, but I think I read it in um, around 1998. It's probably when it came out, but Cryptonomicon, it, it, it really is about um, cryptography, um, the kind of the rise and fall of nation states and um, yeah the the need for a kind of decentralized uh, censorship a resistant digital currency and and all these same threads are in all of Neil's other books as well but so this is all uh, late 90s you know 10 years before the publication of the Bitcoin white paper so perhaps you know not necessarily saying that that Neil is Satoshi or, you know, NS equals SN, but um, certainly clear that uh, whoever was on the Satoshi team would have been very influenced uh, by the work of uh, Neil Stevenson. And um, perhaps they're all hanging out in the same cryptography uh, circles. Could be. Anyway, have a read of that. Have a read of this article. Uh, just look it up uh, on, on Reason. Um, yeah, fascinating stuff. Tongue in cheek, but a lot of fun. All right, I think we'll leave it there, guys. So, hey, that was just a, a fun catch up on, on what's happening in uh, the wonderful world of crypto uh, Twitter today. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to the Crypto Conversation and whatever podcast app you are using. Uh, but that's it for today. Uh, thanks for listening. See you real soon. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave and Ucoin. See ya. <laughs>